Thank you very much for the introduction and welcome. So this talk about modeling of the synchronization control of a hydropower controller um, was uh, is a result of a master project, uh, which was executed by uh, these three students, Jonathan Hellborg, Tonja Tollefsen, and Kamrei Busal. And um, it is about a hydropower control or like how to control, uh, how the synchronization control inside a hydropower controller is uh, working. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the components of a hydropower controller and their functions, um, showing you which library were used for the modeling, um, introducing you for, uh, to the overall system, and also uh, talking a little bit more about the specific models. And then I will um, present the simulation results of a typical synchronization process, and then summary, uh, summarize uh, the work. Okay. So let's start with the hydropower controller. Now, um, this is, uh, I'm from the uh, University of Southeastern Norway. So, and Norway is basically in the lucky position that we have about 99% of our um, power production is actually hydropower. So, and uh, in addition to all the large hydropower station, there are also a lot of small hydropower or smaller hydropower stations. And um, in Norway, we have the categorization of small hydro, which are power stations, which are less than 10 megawatt. Then we have mini hydro, less than one megawatt, and then micro. Um, this work is basically regarding a hydropower controller in the region for small hydro. So particular, this uh, power station was a about two megawatt um, turbine installation. Now, the um, significance of having a small hydro is basically uh, for smaller hydropower stations, you are not, uh, you don't have so many restrictions that maybe larger hydropower stations have with regard to, for example, Walsh control. So you have a, a higher degree of freedom what you can or what you're allowed to do since you are uh, basically a smaller citizens, uh, citizen. And I come back to this. So the hydropower control typ typically consists two parts. You have a turbine governor and a generator governor. So the turbine governor takes um, itself of the regulating or controlling the turbine, uh, whilst the generator, as the name says, is for the generator part. Now, the turbine governor can have different uh, functions included. In this case, we're talking a bit about the speed control and the water level control, but um, there are also other functions uh, available in typical hydropower controllers, but they, those are not part of this paper. The same for the generator governor. Here, I'm going to talk about uh, voltage regulation and the so-called uh, power factor control, which you can also think as a part of the voltage regulation. Um, modeling, um, the modeling of the electric grid parts and the controllers were done uh, using open IPSL, which is a continuation or a continuation, continu continuation of the ITESA project and is currently maintained by the Alset Lab Research Group, which is uh, led by uh, Luigi Van Fretti and some uh, volunteers, me included, working on uh, those. Uh, it's basically a library consisting of standardized uh, models, mainly IEEE models, uh, with their impl implementation uh, in other available uh, software tools, for example, PSSE, in, in the case what we were using. And um, there is the URL where you can get access to that library. Another library which was used is uh, for the water part, uh, for the waterway part. And here we are using our own uh, library. It's uh, an open source hydropower library uh, with uh, is available for academic use, and it is uh, developed by uh, the Tenmark Modeling and Control Center Research Group, which I'm part of. And basically, it contains the textbook waterway models. In addition to that, we also normally, especially when you have uh, models where you uh, work against real-time data, it's quite convenient to be able to load in um, log data and just basically run against those data. And uh, unfortunately, the standard library uh, doesn't provide a very good interface for that. So basically, uh, the format, and when you want to import log data, um, one of the main uh, most important things is missing, and this is basically the CSV format, which is quite convenient because uh, in industry, at least here, what I've experienced, when you want to have log data, often you get an Excel sheet uh, provided, and uh, then it's quite easy to convert this Excel sheet then to CSV, and you can load this directly in with the help of this Modelica Table Editions, which is a library which was also presented here in, at this conference. And it also pro, um, provides support for um, EPW, so weather data and JSON files. Um, so this is one part we're actually using. 
Right, so looking at the system model, um, this is an overview of all the uh, components used here. In the middle you see, or the top middle, you see this uh, greenish uh, surrounded block. This is a GenSol, it's a, a standard generator here in Pol um, from the Open IPSL. It's basically the PSSE implementation and it's verified, hence the green greenish uh, shadow. And uh, this generator is then connected to a very simple grid, just consisting of a infinite bus and a breaker, because we were not actually so interested in this work in the, um, the part of the uh, grid beyond, we just want to synchronize to it. And there's also some generator losses, which are put on here as electrical active power losses. To the generator connected is the waterway model, which is on left here. This is basically con uh, containing the turbine and the turbine gives out a signal, which is the active power, which is then fit fed into the generator model. The um, turbine gets its guide opening signal from the hydropower controller, which is down here. And this is mainly the, uh, the center of the work which was done by um, the student group. Okay, so let's have a look at the waterway, the turbine, just so that you see what's actually um, the background here to really get this whole thing going. Um, this is a typical model of the waterway uh, as done in OpenHVL. So here on the left-hand side, you see there's a, a combi timetable, but the modified version, which can take in a CSV um, file. So I can just have a CSV file lying on my machine and can give it the address and can tell it which rows and which columns to use. And it will just read this during simulation. This controls the headwater level of my hydropower station. And then you have the waterway here consisting of conduit and several orifices and uh, valve components just for the geometry. And in the end, you have a turbine model here, which converts then the hydraulic power into a mechanical power, which is available as a signal to the generator. And then water goes down to the draft tube into the tailwater. Um, the turbine is controlled by a guide vane opening signal, which is provided from the outside. In addition, the output also gives the water level um, because this is needed for the water level controller. Okay, back to the main system. The next part we're looking into is the hydropower controller. So here we have different parts. We have the synchronization, uh, a synchronization block, a frequency controller, a water level controller, and an excitation controller. Um, I'll start with the synchronization controller. This, or not controller, block, it's basically making sure that all uh, conditions in order to be able to connect my generator to the grid are fulfilled. And in detail, it looks like, um, there it is, it looks like the, um, like this, you basically have three blocks, voltage limit check, frequency limit check, and angle limit, limit check. It's a very simple model, just comparing the input signals against some threshold data which are put in. So these are just uh, three instances of the same model with different values. And if they are all true, then you basically can are free to connect your generator. And uh, this RS flip-flop down here just makes sure that once you try to connect, you don't uh, you stay connected at least for a certain number of time. So you don't actually flip back again, right? Uh, because of some uh, dynamic response from the system whilst you're connecting. The next part then inside the hydropower controller is the frequency controller here. So this frequency controller takes in the synchronization from the synchronization is one signal and also the frequency and gives out the guide vein opening. It has different modes. Um, the, basically the modes are disconnected, normal, unstable and isolated, basically how your generator is connected. So is it disconnected? Is it in normal operation? Is it providing an isolated load or is it some unstable voltage um, scenario? And the only difference between the, those different modes is that the internal PI controller, which is this one, has different, um, has different, um, settings for the gain. And so you can switch between the different for the different modes. So there are several of those parameter sets in, uh, implemented. Um, this is just one way to do this. There are always several ways you can do this, but this is how the project has done it. So the next one is in the hydropower controller is the water level controller. So the water level controller takes in a is water level. So what the current water level is, and you have a certain set point compares those two. And then again, there is a PI controller uh, with a certain droop setting. And this 
would normally control the guide vein opening, but you also have a, a water level linearization block here in the middle. Uh, this basically controls how much you will change your guide vein opening depending on how far away you from the optimal water level are. This is one example. So down here, you see the water level difference, you'd say, or the range. And uh, down up here, you see the guide vein opening. And let's say in the middle here, we are basically where the optimal uh, or where the normal uh, guide vein, uh, normal water level is. So this uh, line here or this characteristic would only open 50%. But you might have applications where you say, well, as long as I'm above the nominal, I will go full blast. I will actually uh, have full, uh, fully open production, which is quite uh, typical for small hydro. Um, so you could have a, um, a characteristic which goes like this and then down to zero so that you don't damage your turbine by getting air into if you don't have any water. So you want actually to stop your turbine if the water level goes too low. Then we have the excitation controller, which is down here. So this now controls the um, voltage output. The, the simple excitation controller, which was implemented in this project, is just taking a standard excitation controller from the open IPSL, or which is the ST1A IEEE implementation uh, done in uh, PSSE. And so uh, basically the reference implementation is also verified against PSSE, hence the green shadow. And in addition, it also has something which is called a power factor controller, which is, uh, which is seen down here. And the power factor controller is basically making sure that you run your, uh, your power station always at a certain power factor. Now for small hydropower, they are normally not obliged to follow any voltage regulation uh, restrictions often. And so they're just inter interested in making money, basically produce as much active power as possible. So they would like to run their power station at power factor one. You cannot do this for all power stations because then basically your grid would just collapse. So you would normally have, um, well, smaller ones can do this, larger ones then are not allowed to use such a controller, but it's normally part of a hydropower controller, especially for small hydro. And um, this, the one in implemented is a simplified model based on this standard IEEE model. Then I'm going to show you some results. Um, so I'm just going to show you a sequence of where we start off with a generator with speed control active. And once we reach the uh, correct speed and we have met all the conditions, we can actually switch over to water level control. Now, if I look at the turbine governor side, it looks something like this. So here you see in per unit, uh, on the top graph, the generator speed, and in um, red, you see the active power also in per unit, and down here, you see the guide vein opening. So what happens first here in the first seconds is here from 10 seconds on, we actually ramping up the speed of the generator in order to prepare the connection to the grid. And you can see this also the guide vein opening gets uh, gradually opened in order to accelerate the generator. Once we reach the uh, speed of the grid or the per unit speed, then at one point when all the other conditions are also fulfilled, we're connecting and the guide wind actually jumps to full because we're now switching over to a power factor uh, water level controller where the water level is so high that we're actually allowing full uh, production and hence the active power production also ramps up. Then the next bit is just have a look at the synchronization sequence. So we normally have to check if the voltage are within limits, if the frequency are within limits, Th those things actually happen at the same time. So you can have, so you have both at the same time. So you have to check if the voltage is in limit and the frequency. Then in addition, you would then also check if the angle is in li uh, within limits, which means you ha cannot have any phase shift between the generator produced voltage and the grid voltage before you can initiate the synchronization, basically close the switch. And you do this by simply here, in this case, we have a, a switch which says, okay, now I want to synchronize, which is actually flipped at 40 seconds before we already have the speed control active, which means now uh, at this point, 40 seconds, the voltage is within limits. So it jumps to true and the frequency is within limits, it jumps to true. The angle is not displayed here, but it will be within limits at this point at 50 seconds where you can see the initial uh, synchronization is activated. And um, so now you basically are connected. This looks, if we look at the frequency just alone, you see there is the boundary for uh, the frequency here. And uh, you might be able to see that the frequency is slightly higher than the um, nominal, like the deviation is slightly up above. This is normal that you try to run your generator slightly faster than the grid in order to not be a burden once you connect it. And if you look at the angle at the same time, this is the warped angle. 
um, it should be just 100 between a minus and plus 180 degrees. And when the speed is near the uh, nominal speed, then you see that the angle change is getting smaller and smaller. And now we have a situation where at 40 seconds, we say, OK, now we are ready to connect. And you uh, see here that the angle is not within the limits. So we're not connecting at 40 seconds. The next time we are actually within the limits is at a little bit over 50 seconds, which you could see also on the previous plots. Last thing, voltage controller. Um, it has two inputs, the terminal voltage and the generator voltage. And then the output is the excitation voltage. So here you can see during the uh, uh, synchronization, the output is set to uh, slightly above one in order to keep the uh, terminal voltage as it should be. And once we're connected, it's now uh, producing active power, which means the machine internally uses uh, reactive power, which uh, then the voltage controller tries to compensate in order to run power factor one. So you see here the output of the uh, voltage controller is ramping up in order to provide enough reactive power for the active power production. Okay. This concludes my presentation. So the model of the hydro, uh, hydro power controller was created. The different controllers were first implemented uh, individually and also tested individually, and then combined and tested against log data. You haven't seen any log data here. Uh, the reason is basically, um, I wasn't sure what I'm allowed to show and what not. So I rather took the easy way out and uh, didn't show that uh, verification log data, but uh, we were quite, or like the, uh, our partner was actually uh, satisfied with the result. Um, future work is the detailed model of the little grid, because you could see there was very little in, in those terms. Our partner in this case was not so interested because a small power uh, manufacturer like uh, or producer doesn't have any, any uh, restrictions in as to what uh, the voltage re regulation is. So the, they didn't have any data on that part, but we are now working on different projects where we inc including also more um, detailed models. Um, there is a more detailed model of, a model of the electrical uh, excitation already finished now. Um, it's the next talk, which is going to be presented now after this one. And uh, another uh, work we're, we're working on is basically getting more verification, verification data like always, you need more parameters and more log data. That's it. And um, so as an acknowledgement, this was um, basically a master project group, which was working on this and with, in cooperation with the Norwegian hydropower company. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask or contact me if you want. <laughs>